Good evening. I'm Siwapili Rose Amador, and this is Native Voice TV. Well, I hope you haven't forgot about the ARP campaign because we have the Divided We Fail campaign going on with ARP. So I'd like you to log into aarp.org and sign up to support health care for all. I think we have the information on the screen there somewhere, or did we lose it? But anyhow, what you are doing is tell, telling uh, millions of other voters that you will support the candidates that are supporting indigenous people and health care for all. And a couple other announcements coming up. And this one, I'm giving you advance notice so you can't say you have something else scheduled and you forgot about it. This is March 15th and 16th. It's the Mexica New Year's. And if you've gone before, you know it's a fantastic... Uh, event in the community and there it is up on the screen uh, we're not sure as where it's gonna it will be in San Jose but save the date it's March 15th and 16th so we will see you there put that on your calendar now and then something else coming up that's really um, fascinating here is the snag magazine fundraisers we're gonna have some guests from snag magazine on next week and I'll tell you a little bit about, this is um, December 14th, it's a Friday. It will be at the International Friendship House. Um, a lot of good groups will be there. Uh, good Shield will be there. Good Shield is the, um, wrote the theme music for Native Voice TV. So I look forward to seeing Good Shield again. And a lot of good entertainment there. So I hope you come out and support Snag Magazine. It's a wonderful youth magazine that's been out for several years now. And you'll learn more about it um, next week. Well, now it's my pleasure to introduce Tony Redhouse. Welcome, Tony. Hi there. Thank you very much for having me. It's a pleasure to have you here all the way from Arizona. Yes, Tucson. Please introduce yourself to our uh, audience. Hi, my name is Tony Redhouse, and I am from the Navajo Nation. Uh, I travel around the country, and I share Native American spirituality and uh, different presentations using music and song and dance. I heard you had a performance in Santa Cruz last night, and it was wonderful. So maybe you'll share some of that with us today. Yeah, I will uh, share some of those aspects with you. And how did you get into um, this form of spirituality? Well, I was raised uh, as a performer in my family. We all danced. Mm -hmm. uh, my dad, uh, he uh, taught us to work with our hands, to do beadwork, and to make things beautiful things with our hands, and also to uh, perform as a family and bring cultural awareness to, uh, to uh, modern society and, uh, in fact, to the Bay Area here. Oh, when we were nice. children, I was actually born in Monterey, California. Oh, were you? Oh, yes. Okay. And he was stationed at Fort Ord, uh, California, the U.S. Army base. And how many members of your family perform? Uh, all six of us. Oh, good. And we're uh, also uh, Native American jazz uh, musicians. We're a jazz ensemble on Canyon Records, the Red House Family Jazz Ensemble. We do uh, jazz fusion uh, similar to uh, influences by Chick Corea, Herbie Hancock, and that type of uh, music. Wow, very talented family. Did you bead? Uh, oh, yeah. Work? You bead at that. Yes, and yeah, everything is uh, representing uh, my story and my path and my colors and uh, my symbols and that kind of thing, too. Well, why don't you tell us about your okay. story? Um, the blue, predominant blue beadwork represents the sky. In uh, Native American tradition, we many times observe nature and the forces of nature, and we uh, learn lessons and, and get stories from these. And the blue represents freedom because in the sky, the birds can fly wherever they want to go, no rush hour traffic, they can go wherever they want to. And so that's why I put blue is because I want that freedom to be able to reach my highest goals and my highest dreams. The red and black and orange are the fire colors and they represent the hot times in our life, the trials, mm -hmm. death in the family, addictions, dysfunctions, conflict in life, sickness, and as we go through the red, orange and black of the fire in life, we end up with the center of our heart being clear, being pure, and being true, our heart being true. Oh, I see. Now, you use music and dance. Yes. And how do you incorporate that? Uh, I, I share Native American music as meditation, as a tool, 
to help people to uh, find focus and to get balance. I work at uh, substance abuse recovery centers. I, I did that in Phoenix in the metropolitan area with Native American substance abuse uh, men and women programs and also HIV AIDS. And I use music to help them to, uh, to heal and to focus. And then uh, I also teach them to work with their hands and to create uh, crafts as part of their therapy, oh. something beautiful with their lives. So I work with addicts in Tucson now uh, at women's uh, rehab, mm -hmm. uh, 25 uh, meth, heroin, and cocaine addicts every week on Tuesday nights. And that's a different way of healing from yes. the traditional way. It, do you find it being more effective? It's all the same to me. Mm -hmm. It's all spiritual. Um, when our soul is connected with the ancestors, when our soul is connected with the spiritual forces, uh, my grandfather was a medicine man, Hostein Redhouse, uh, that a lot of these things are passed through us and whatever our gift is in life, whatever our path is, uh, it can have no other way but to be expressed through whatever means is available in us. And so it starts coming out of your pores, it starts coming out of your mouth, out of your voice, out of your drum, you make drums, uh, and, and you create things uh, that are beautiful to help people, inspire people. And you certainly have. Can you tell us about your CDs? Yes, uh, Soul Blessing CD is my recent CD a couple of years ago, and that was uh, nominated into now, the- this is the one in the front right yes, here. This was okay. uh, nominated for the Grammy, it was into the Grammy uh, system. Uh, and that is a song with seven different uh, songs from the story of my life that highlight uh, different aspects in traditional Native American music uh, and dance and art, uh, they tell a story. And so my music in a very traditional sense, it is contemporary music, but in a traditional sense, it is sharing my path, my uh, experiences in life. We have another one here too, so I'd like to hold this yes. one up. And uh, Journey to the Four Winds is a beautiful meditation CD. Mm -hmm. And that is a CD that uh, helps children to go to sleep. It also helps you to uh, do work at the computer. It's very subtle, very relaxing. It has a continuous heartbeat throughout the whole CD. And it takes you to the four directions for healing. Oh, how beautiful. That would be nice to put to have the kids take their naps. Yes. Or I might take a nap. <laughs> that's a good idea. Well, that's great. Would you like to demonstrate sure. for us? Yeah, I'd like to uh, sing a song from the Navajo Nation. Okay. And this is, uh, these are our social dance songs, uh, actually squaw dance songs, actually three different sections that are kind of squished together into a dance mix. And this is uh, songs that my father would uh, sing as he was herding sheep when he was a young man on the reservation, the Four Corners area, Tisnaspas area, the Red House family. And he would be herding sheep up the mountain, taking them up to a higher pasture. Hey, hey, young, ah, hey, young, ah, yo, ho, hey, 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 hey,
uh, that's what, what uh, resonates with people when they put on the radio. Mm -hmm. And there's a song that they hear, they hear a voice and somebody's really singing from it's deep connecting down. with them. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not commercial, but it's something from deep within your gut and it's coming out through here and it's being expressed uh, with your voice. And so that's not so much the, uh, so much the music that you use, but it's the soul that you're doing it from that really yeah. touches people. And now, are you going to play more drummer? I see the flute sitting uh, there. Yeah, you're looking at that flute. <laughs> yeah, I am. I'm going to uh, use some Native American flute, and I'm going to just demonstrate a little bit of meditation okay. uh, music to help you to zone out, help you to relax, and maybe some of the uh, TV audience would really enjoy taking a moment to hear their breath and their heartbeat. I'm relaxed. <laughs> Can you tell me about some of the instruments you were using there? Yes, I use uh, indigenous instruments from around the world. Uh, some of them I create myself if I can't find the sound I'm looking for. Other instruments I, I have uh, from other cultures, and sometimes I do concerts in collaboration with other uh, indigenous peoples, and then we barter. We trade instruments and different things like that. And so some of these things are are simple uh, materials like from Home Depot or Home Base. Uh, you find these oak slats, I cut them to size, tuned them, and then painted little eagle feathers on them, and I made a little uh, instrument like. Wow. That has a real unique sound. Yeah, and so uh, a lot of these instruments are from people, natives like ourselves, mm -hmm. that are in other cultures. It's beautiful, beautiful. And you dance. Oh, wait, yes. let me ask you, what is it? The, there's a belt and oh. it's like horse hair? Yes, that is actually. We have them moving all over this set, I'm sorry, but there's so much to look at here. It's actually a, a horse tail. And uh, it's actually. Are we having a problem? Technical <laughs> difficulties? No, no, we're not. <laughs> and it's actually a, a dance where you're depicting the movements of a horse, the different mm -hmm. gates of a horse. And so that is a dance that maybe some young boys might be doing if they were 
Yeah, that is, I've never seen anything like it. That's yeah. the whole hor it horse's is, it is tail, horse isn't tail. it? Oh my gosh, yeah. yeah. So you're, you're so mimicking the movement. There's not a horse going around without a tail. The movements of a horse, <laughs> yeah. There is, oh dear. Wow, that is something. So you would be dancing to a straight beat. Mm -hmm. It would be an up-tempo beat, and you would be dancing out pretty much the, uh, the steps of a horse and And so Are we it would able be to kind get that, of a, or do we need to move? It would be kind of a fun mm -hmm. dance, yeah. Okay. Wow, that is something. And the um, can we do the hoops now, or do we need to move? I just wanted to make sure we we're in the shot here. I don't want to lose anything because there's so much to see and it's so unique. And what do you do with the hoops? Okay, the hoops are. Are we too uh, far in? Are we okay? Okay. The hoops good. are a story of how the circles of life, how our human life cycle, and our different stages and seasons in life are marked by the four different points in the hoop. How our human life cycle connects with the plant life cycle, and then that connects with the lunar cycle, and that connects with the animal life cycles and that connects with all of the Harley-Davidson motorcycles. <laughs> and what you have is you end up with the universe, which is one big circle of interconnected smaller circles like you and I, which are valuable, which are unique, and how we bring completeness and harmony to the universe. We make it whole. And so that's what the hoop dance is about. It's about oh, connecting okay. circles of life together, creating different designs as you're doing it, maintaining a certain beat, a certain rhythm, and showing your connection. And it is also a story dance because the designs that I create are designs that are relevant to my path in life. The lessons I've learned from the eagle, from the eagle's nest, the baby eagle, the full-grown eagle, leaving the nest when it's time, the hummingbird, the cyclone, Mother Earth, the globe, and Mickey Mouse. So all of these designs are reflections of my life, my experiences, my memories. Mickey Mouse is no different. It's very traditional because it is representing an experience at Disneyland when I was a child mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and a good memory. And so. We put these into our dancing, just like we put it into our beadwork and, and our stories and everything else. Wow. So you mentioned Mickey Mouse. Do you also do, do this for schools or? Yes. Oh, you do? Yes, I do assemblies for uh, schools and I also go to senior centers and I present for the elders, which oh, I excellent. consider elders of all races. Mm -hmm. uh, and I also travel to different tribal communities and they, and they hire me to come out to uh, present to them and also federal government agencies mm -hmm. for uh, cultural awareness and spiritual uh, presentations, keynote speaking. Excellent, because I see where it would be very educational for yes. all of us. Uh -huh. Beautiful. Would you honor us with another song? Sure.
Beautiful. How can someone get your CDs? I think we had the information, but tell us more about that. Uh, they can contact me directly on TonyRedhouse.net. Uh, and they can get my email address on there. Uh, my email address is Tony Redhouse, the number one at AOL.com. And also you can contact InvincibleMusic.com. And they are the uh, small record label in Phoenix, independent record label that has produced my latest CD. Uh, and Canyon yeah, Records yeah. also carries other CDs that I also have done uh, as a trio, Native Flamenco, Maze, and those are also on Canyon Records. Now, I know they've been playing this one on uh, Indian Time locally, uh -huh. so I know people would be looking for it. Be a great Christmas present. Yes, it would it? be. So yes. that'd be great for the holidays. Uh -huh. And your music is just relaxing me because I've had such a stressful day. So <laughs> this is wonderful, wonderful. Good, good. Yeah. Um, so tell us, um, what are your future plans? Um, well, I've been uh, collaborating with the uh, Council of 13 Indigenous Grandmothers recently. Tell us and about I've, that. I've been connecting with them. They are a Council of 13 Indigenous Grandmothers, Wisdom Keepers, Healers, uh, and they, are, uh, they have been brought together by a vision, and they have combined forces. Uh, there's a grandmother from Africa, uh, I think Peru, Mayan, uh, Brazil, uh, Native Americans in North America, and they've combined uh, Nepal, and they brought their stories, their wisdoms, and their, uh, and their information and healing, uh, and they're going to world leaders, speaking to world leaders about being in harmony with Mother Earth again, and, and being uh, in good relationships with the forces of nature. And so they're traveling around the world, they're trying to get an audience with the Pope, uh, and different world leaders and they're traveling to these places and I've been uh, creating music. Uh, they've allowed me to record them uh, and to uh, create music uh, that's going to accompany their songs and their stories and their dances that they're going to leave for the next, for the children of the next seven generations. Wow, that that's must their goal. be some powerful energy. Yeah, it is. Yes, it's that a beautiful, beautiful connection with them. Yes. And, oh, we only have five minutes left. Okay. You know, I'm going to ask you to play some more music for us if you'd okay. like to do flute or music, sure. whatever. Uh -huh. It's all beautiful. And I want to thank you for joining us next week. We'll hear from Snag Magazine, Native Voice TV, 6 o'clock every Sunday. And let's listen to some more music so we can relax. It's been a stressful week.